What I wanted to talk about is some maybe some statistics that are showing, I guess, the size of the issue yeah. um, worldwide. Um, so I saw uh, Peter Kelly uh, from the UK Health and Safety Executive um, put some stuff up on LinkedIn recently. And, and Peter's going to be one of our guests, actually, in the first few episodes. i uh, really interested in getting him on board. Um, but he uh, posted the latest stats from 2019, this was, in, in the UK. Uh, they had 828,000 cases uh, of workplace stress, which required time off. Um, 17.8 million days lost. Yeah. Worst year on record, uh, apparently. Up until 2019. <laughs> Up until 2019. We're not talking about 2020. That's right. So that was pre-COVID. Now, uh, he has estimated uh, that it could hit a million cases uh, for 2020, thanks to the extra pressures that COVID has put on everyone. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. So, um, you know, this is the worst year on record. Again, as we were talking about before, uh, even though we're getting much better in how we manage physical health and safety, we, it seems like we're just getting more and more workplace stress claims and psychological injury claims. And certainly um, the, the feedback that, um, that I was seeing coming through from uh, facility operators um, with the regulator was that their EAP providers were really being overwhelmed um, with the, the volume of, of calls that they were getting for people who were really struggling um, to the point that they've sort of been really proactively recruiting and actually um, sending people so that they'll have a psych actually stationed at a facility, um, at an offshore facility, which is a fairly new thing going on, but actually having somebody going out there regularly, um, going out to the mine sites as well regularly. Yep. So um, people are definitely drawing on that EAP as, as a source of support, but I think what we want to do is get to people before they're at the point of needing the EAP. Yeah, that's right. Um, so that was from the, the UK. Um, Safe Work Australia stats have just dropped um, on the 12th of January, so just in the last couple of weeks, the latest. Uh, and I believe there was – and um, this isn't all of the claims because it doesn't include people like the WA police. It doesn't include anyone working for the Defence Force or, or anything like that. Yeah, also people who are self-employed um, and – Probably companies who are self-insured wouldn't be included in that um, in those data sets either. So that's probably excluding quite a lot of really large companies. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So it's, it's it, keeping in mind that mm. okay, uh, out of all of the injury claims that were made, eight percent of them were related to mental disorders. Okay, so stress-related um, conditions. Um, that was ten thousand uh, cases total. Now, we also have here um, the, uh, the changes over time. Um, and what we can see is from 2000, 2001, um, it has gone up 28%. Um, so we're, we're seeing a, a big increase over that period of time. Now, the thing is when these, these occur, they generally are more complex than many physical uh, injuries and, and illnesses. Um, and require longer times off work. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I think probably the other thing to note here is that these are only the claims that were assessed as compensable. Yeah. Um, and that's, you know, taking on balance um, outside of work factors as well as work factors as well as ability to prove what was going on at work contributed to um, the, the development of the disease or illness. Um, so my suspicion is that this is a significant underreporting of of what's actually um, happening. Yeah, no, I, I think you're, you're dead right. So um, if, if we have a look, yeah, so it's gone up 28%. And then if we look at the average time off work, we're looking at a median of over 20 weeks. And that's pretty significant. Yep, absolutely. Now, um, New South Wales, Safe Work New South Wales have drafted a uh, code of practice um, for psychological health, um, which they published in September for comment. Yes, yeah, and they um, published some statistics along with that as well. Uh, now, they're a little bit different to the um, Australian statistics, and I'd be interested if we can get Ian Firth on from Safe Work New South Wales in, in the coming weeks to talk to, to these statistics. Um, but they have, uh, when looking at the stats between 2019 back to 2015, uh, they've tracked a 53% increase in psychological injury claims compared to 3.5% increase in, in physical injury claims. Yeah. 
So again, that gives credit to um, the health and safety profession in that we're actually managing um, safety risks, physical safety risks pretty well. Uh, but there's a huge opportunity for health and safety to get involved in the management of, of psychological uh, risk. Yeah, and it, it certainly suggests that strategies that are already in place are probably not very effective um, if we're seeing increases in um, in the claims being made there. Yeah.